a quarter century ago, the Keepers of the Keys, which included Ellie Wheaton and her beau Lucas Caravaggio as well as Rendell Locke, Kim Topher, Jeff Ellis, Mark Cho, and Aaron Voss, used one of the few magical keys to open the black door. This caused Caravaggio to be taken over by a careless shadow devil. Sadly, Locke is forced to murder Caravaggio, and the group of witnesses splits off. They were forced to erase Locke's memories and use the plant key to cover them up since. Locke's brother, Duncan, witnessed what happened. In the present, Ellie uses one of the keys to bring a mysterious creature called Reverberation, whom she calls a void, into the wellhouse. Ellie thought she was bringing the resurrected Lucas there, but instead she accidentally caught Echo, leaving the gaunt and provoked young woman consumed with rage. After nine months, a guy calls Ellie from a deserted town, fearing that his memories will be vulnerable to hazy powers. He takes a key out of his safe and jams it into his jaw, setting himself and his entire house ablaze. Rendell receives a visit from juvenile offender Sam Lesser 90 days later, who savagely kills him when he refuses to divulge information about Key House, giving rise to the Locke family consisting of the energetic Tyler, the self-sufficient Kinsey, the little Bode, and their empathetic mother Nina, moving to their family home. Their uncle Duncan extends the invitation to them. Tyler and Kinsey begin their first day of school the following day, while Duncan leaves to travel to Boston for work and gives Nina the. Tyler attends a party where he meets Javi and Eden Hawkins, two extremely well-known and conceited Matheson students, and plays with Jackie Veda, Eden's close friend. Kinsey meets up with Scott Cavendish and his informal group of friends known as the Savini Squad to see a movie, but she departs when she realizes she isn't a champion by any means Scott had a great sense of shame and would use any way to avoid it. While alone at home, Bode discovers a sealed latrine with a well and becomes aware of a conversation with the Echo, who is still inside the well and is unable to escape. She asks whether he has seen any of the mystical keys that are hidden around Keyhouse Manor, revealing their existence as she wants to finally incorporate them against the late Rendell's wishes back into the master plan. He finds the Anywhere key in Kinsey's wristband and uses it to take frozen yogurt while still standing in front of Kinsey, who is skeptical of his account. Bode notices the mirror key in the garbage disposal after hearing murmuring, and Echo later learns that the key enables the client to communicate with the deceased, she tells him to use it under adult supervision. Once more, Bode's attempt to see his father fails. Miserably when Nina foolishly approaches the mirror and finds herself in an unflinchingly ominous reflection, prompting Bode to advise Echo. She wishes him karma and, after a spell of detention, goes adds him by stealing the anywhere key and escaping onto a stormy road. She does this harshly, though quietly, to get him to apply the skills he will urgently need to protect Nina himself. Kinsey suggests having Tyler enter with a rope, thereby saving their mother. Bode reveals the key and the house's magic as everyone wonders what occurred. Despite this, Nina cannot recall the incident. Bode initially confuses her kids, but he is eventually able to convince Kinsey and Tyler that they weren't dreaming. Bode spends the next few days trying to figure out what is going on with the keys and the woman from the wellhouse after mistakenly believing that their error about the mirror key was a malicious deceit. He meets Rufus in the mixture, who explains that he looks after the gardens at Key House. The two become friends over their shared love of action figures. While this is happening, Sam, who was arrested after failing to kill Nina or Kinsey, receives an unlucky visit from Echo. She continues to use the Anywhere key to access the computer even though she is obviously famished and wearing filthy clothes due to her lengthy detention take cheap food and steal numerous extravagant clothing items. After some time, she begins having sex with a child, continuing until she has vigorously worn him out. She returns to Bode with an olive branch in the late morning, only to learn that he has stolen a phony key from a tool store and is using it as a bear trap to harm her and coerce her into returning it, as Rufus had originally planned. Bode also continues to lie about having found any further keys. She tells him to hand the keys to her when he sees them since she feels tricked and aggravated. Game area filled with antiquated objects. 
Nita wonders if Ellie might be looking for something, but Ellie brushes the idea off. The days that follow find Nina reflecting about her interactions with Rendell. She was clearly disturbed. Tyler asks Mr. Ridgeway about the event after grudgingly agreeing to participate in the 5K, and he learns that it is all necessary for trying something new. Returning to Key House, he notices the head key and, in exchange for Boat's help doing so, allows him to accompany him in his thoughts. There, he learns that he wants to insert a collection of experiences book, just like Kinsey had taken. Something out. After school, Tyler and Jackie visit community organizations in the city, and they later run into one another in the library as Tyler is reading a book by Jane Austen. Having decided on the nicest cafe, the two go out to dinner. As planned, Scott goes to Key House with Kinsey. Kinsey pays Scott a visit, informs him about the keys, and shows him the head key as evidence. The two then kiss. When Tyler returns, Kinsey accepts his offer of lunch from Bills as a gesture of reconciliation. The Echo discovers that the majority of Aaron Voss's friends are currently deceased and begins to penetrate her brain while visiting her at the mental emergency clinic. Aaron Voss had been quiet for some time due to a previous accident. She then surprises Bode. He tries to strike her with a stick but when he acknowledges she can't take the keys, she is left with little choice but to go for the time being. She diverts his attack, drags him outside, and surrounds him in a ring of flames. Kinsey apologizes to her mother for her earlier harsh remarks, and the two give each other hugs. The music box key, which is able to control the actions of another, makes an appearance in front of Tyler and Kinsey as the major key that Boat was unable to find. Kinsey displays it to her friends at school, and while they are all observing from a distance, she tries to humiliate Eden Hawkins and exact revenge on everyone she has wronged. Individual Savini squad member Gabe notices what is occurring. As she delightfully makes it out to be parody and creatively sends out a fun clip that eventually becomes an online sensation, angering Jackie and Tyler. Both school life is not revealed, but when Tyler becomes closer to Jackie and begins helping with the organization of a pledge drive, he never returns to the hockey team. Nina comes to know Tyler's English teacher, Joe Ridgway, as well as one of the past keepers of the keys, Ellie Whedon. After that, Tyler spends time with Javi and Brinker before they try to transport him to the junk shop because he has admitted to his friends that he participated in his argument with Eden, despite the fact that they had no sexual contact the previous evening. Kinsey agrees to step in. Whenever half of Scott's cast departs due to problems with the content and therefore becomes an integral part of the work. But despite Scott's assurances that everything is okay and they can leave, she storms out after having flashbacks to the tragic event that brought them to Keyhouse refilm. When Tyler returns, tensions increase between the two of them, and Kinsey discovers that she is upset that Tyler no longer talks to her. The argument between the two ends when Kinsey notices Bode in his room, with the key he previously located inside the vacuum cleaner now around his neck. Bode discovers that Tyler and Kinsey are inside his thoughts, where feelings excessively awaken, as they are in awe of the wondrous box that is in front of them. Tyler and Kinsey steal the keys from a furious Bode because they are afraid about the damage they might do. Kinsey believes Rendell was probably aware of them to some extent. Bode discovers the wellhouse woman in her quest for the keys in the meantime, Echo looks for Mark and visits a dilapidated building in quest of a safe. She notices a key around the neck of a nearby child, which prompts her to push the child into the railroad track in order to steal the object from him and preserve their secrecy. On the mantelpiece, a painting catches Bode's attention. He finds another key hidden inside. He enters the astral realm through a massive entrance in the library, moves to the Key House Holmes Burial Cemetery, and encounters Chamberlain Locke's ghost there. Tyler intervenes when he witnesses Kinsey being hassled during a hockey game, ultimately starting a fight that Nina confronts Tyler about. Ellie and she become friends, but the activity the center teacher gives off the impression that she knows more about Key House than she is willing to admit. Tyler finally apologizes to Kinsey for the conflict from earlier in the evening, but Kinsey keeps using the head key on herself and crashes her car into a strong mall. 
after going over some of her memories, a vicious woman. With light hair comes after them, but they are able to fend her off. Kinsey decides to watch a local cover band with Scott instead of going to the theater after talking to her mother about it. She continues to use Game area filled with antiquated objects. Nita wonders if Ellie might be looking for something, but Ellie brushes the idea off. The days that follow find Nina reflecting about her interactions with Rendell. She was clearly disturbed. Tyler asks Mr. Ridgeway about the event after grudgingly agreeing to participate in the 5K, and he learns that it is all necessary for trying something new. Returning to Key House, he notices the head key and, in exchange for Boat's help doing so, allows him to accompany him in his thoughts. There, he learns that he wants to insert a collection of experiences book, just like Kinsey had taken. Something out. After school, Tyler and Jackie visit community organizations in the city, and they later run into one another in the library as Tyler is reading a book by Jane Austen. Having decided on the nicest cafe, the two go out to dinner. As planned, Scott goes to Key House with Kinsey. Kinsey pays Scott a visit, informs him about the keys, and shows him the head key as evidence. The two then kiss. When Tyler returns, Kinsey accepts his offer of lunch from Bills as a gesture of reconciliation. The Echo discovers that the majority of Aaron Boss's friends are currently deceased and begins to penetrate her brain while visiting her at the mental emergency clinic. Aaron Voss had been quiet for some time due to a previous accident. She then surprises Bode. He tries to strike her with a stick but when he acknowledges she can't take the keys, she is left with little choice but to go for the time being. She diverts his attack, drags him outside, and surrounds him in a ring of flames. Kinsey apologizes to her mother for her earlier harsh remarks, and the two give each other hugs. The music box key, which is able to control the actions of another, makes an appearance in front of Tyler and Kinsey as the major key that Boat was unable to find. Kinsey displays it to her friends at school, and while they are all observing from a distance, she tries to humiliate Eden Hawkins and exact revenge on everyone she has wronged. Individual Savini squad member gave notices what is occurring. As she delightfully makes it out to be parody and creatively sends out a fun clip that eventually becomes an online sensation, angering Jackie and Tyler. Both school life is not revealed, but when Tyler, he never returns to the hockey team. End of story. Thanks for watching.